Welcome back. As the title says, I have success with the calibration of sensors. Hope you enjoy. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. Hi there. Back in the hangar. Yep. A few more things need to be done. Uh, I know this is taking a long time. There's going to be like three videos on the same thing, sort of. Uh, but I had to get this right. And, um, well, we'll see if I get it right. Um, I'm, uh, I'm just finishing up that fuel pressure sensor and getting it um, uh, calibrated properly. I got some guidance from the manufacturer and um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. So anyways, I'll just fly right into this update here and um, let you follow along um, and we'll see how I do in the editing with all of this kind of stuff. So, oh, and by the way, um, it really, really helps if you hit that like button at the bottom there. And if you want to follow along, subscribe, and you'll be notified uh, that uh, next time I drop a video on this Challenger 2 with all the upgrades and all that. And uh, soon it'll be in the air. That'll be fun. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for following along. And again, remember, down there, the like button. Hit it. God, you really want to. I know you do. Well, uh, actually, you need to be subscribed. YouTube to do that. But if you have a Google account, a Gmail account, that's your login in case you didn't know. Anyways, pitter patter, let's get at her and on to the work. Well, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have success with the fuel pressure gauge. Didn't have to change anything, but I, I did cut a wire so I could test something. So let me just show you what I did. Follow me as I carry this camera to the back and I have the fuel pump running right now, just, just keeping pressure. So, let's spin you around. Okay, this wire over here, which is cut, uh, is coming from the fuel pressure sensor. What I did was I measured the voltage when it was zero PSI, and I measured the voltage when it was running at, at whatever the pressure was coming out of there. I was really more concerned with the bottom, the zero PSI setting. According to the manufacturer, that sensor that I purchased uh, will have uh, 0.5 volts at zero PSI, plus or minus 10%. Not that accurate in that regard. At the top end, it's actually plus or minus 2%, but whatever. I was getting 4 uh, 0.45 to 0.46 volts uh, at zero PSI, which was within specifications. But my EFIS was showing 1.7 PSI when there was zero PSI. The top of the scale was showing pretty close to correct, but the bottom of the scale wasn't. So how do I get to zero this thing out? Well, again, uh, love the Grand Rapids technologies. I, I strongly recommend it. However, I think they need to hire somebody to do a, um, uh, a manual, an installation manual. Uh, and, and a very detailed one would be nice uh, in PDF format, whatever, uh, that says, okay, this is what this function does, this is how it does it, and this is how it changes things. That would help a lot for both the EFIS and the EIS, because uh, uh, through hit and miss and um, understanding how it works has helped me, because again, as you may know, I do dabble a lot in electronics and design work, that kind of stuff. I also do a lot of with software and whatever. So, um, because I have that basics in the knowledge, I kind of know that there's going to be a way to uh, find a zero set point and the maximum set point and that linear, it's actually quite linear, um, uh, scale as the voltage increases to give me the correct sh uh, um, pressure had to be there somewhere. Well, there's two settings, because I've got this tied to the uh, engine information system. I could have had it tied to the EFIS, but the two settings are exactly the same. You've got your uh, multiplication factor, I think they call it, and then you've got your offset. Um, couldn't get any information as to what those do with the fellow I spoke to, um, and because he wasn't a, a design engineer, he was just, you know, helping with, you know, basic stuff. Um, but, uh, after talking to him, I kind of realized that, you know, there's nothing wrong with any of the equipment, it's just settings. So that's why I cut that wire, measured the voltage, it's within spec of the manufacturer. And it also makes sense. 
it wouldn't be zero volts. There's going to be some voltage there. And 0.5, uh, 0.48 volts, 0.45 volts, whatever. Um, <laughs> to me, that's it, it makes sense as well uh, because there is a solid state device inside the pressure sensor. Let me just pass this around here. This little sensor here, it's not just a, a, a little you know, resistive. There is an actual solid state device in these. I managed to get an exploded diagram of these and there is a microchip inside there and all that. Anyways, um, again, I won't get technical, but 4.5, uh, 4.6 volts is actually what it was, uh, made sense. That is, that's going to be zero. So let's go back to the EIS and the EFIS. Right now the fuel pump is running. Uh, actually, before we do that, let me show you what I also had to do. Here's my fuel hose coming from the fuel pump. There's a valve. I can open and close it in order to get, uh, in order to drain it or release pressure. And then I, I cut this and put a T-tap into a fuel pressure gauge. And right now, that fuel pressure gauge is showing me as 4 PSI. It's just slightly under 4 PSI, but that's where it's at, 4 PSI, okay? This is a brand new gauge, by the way. I just purchased it today. Now let's take a look at what my EFIS is showing me. Hope you can see that. 4, 3.9 to 4, which it does match what I got in the manual gauge. Great. Now let's turn the fuel pump off and watch that drop. Okay, 3.5, 3, let's go quickly here. The gauge is now at 2.5 and it's 2.2 and dropping. It, well, I won't, I'd have to stretch this uh, fuel line out to the EFIS and put it side by side, but essentially, they match almost exactly now and it goes to zero right now it's showing one psi 0.8 okay, i'm going to open the valve and release all the pressure and we hit zero well, 0.10 it's still dropping there's a little bit of so anyways that works now now for those of you who have this product, the Grand Rapids EFIS and the engine information system, and you want to do the same, and you've hooked the fuel pressure to the auxiliary on the engine information, or even on the EFIS. I think it'll work exactly the same. Let me show you the settings I had to set it to in order to get it working. So, let's, actually I'm going to turn the display on for one second. There we go. Press and hold those two buttons till it gets into programming mode. Okay. The auxiliary, I set it to 194. Okay. And that's giving me an, a, a very, very accurate uh, reading of pressure at the top of the scale and all the way down. The offset is 69. Now, that zeroes it down. It, it gives me the zero reading, but when you set the offset, it affects the top end of the scale too. So if your offset is zero and your, your scale is reading accurate at the top, but never gets to zero, you change your offset, you raise it up to say 47 or something, well, something else I noticed. There's a difference between even and odd numbers. If I go to 68, it jumps a lot, so it's all odd numbers. I don't know why the software does that. I'm going to talk to one of the software writers or the engineers and say, okay, what would give us? Why is it? Is there the offset even and odd numbers give me completely different readings? But as you go higher up in the scale, you lower down that zero if you're on the odd numbers. If you're on the even numbers, it actually goes the other way. Maybe that's how it's designed. I don't know. I will find out. And I'll post a little update. So when you set your offset, you need to reset the, your, your primary setting. 
and you go back and forth and back and forth. And I went back and forth until I got zero at zero PSI, and if I'm at 4.2 PSI on the gauge, it's reading 4.2 here. And when I turn the pump off, it drops three and a half. It's three and a half, three, two and a half, two, one and a half, one, and it follows. Okay, so I've got that set now where it's accurate. And the settings for this was 69 on the offset, odd number, and the uh, the primary was. Oh, hang on, I forgot. <laughs> Let me go back into programming. Sorry about this. This is live video. Uh, single take stuff, not what you get out of Hollywood or Nat Geo. So I've got 194 for the, uh, uh, for the, uh, the factor, the, the scaling factor, and um, 69 for the offset. Now if I had the offset at zero and I lift this at 194, it would show me about 8.4 psi. Ah. So if, if that sensor went to actual zero volts at, at uh, no pressure, then leaving that um, auxiliary uh, scale factor, uh, the primary setting, to 100 would probably be right bang on. But because it never reaches zero volts, uh, you have to put in an offset, and when you put in the offset, you, you affect the, uh, the, the uh, scale factor and you have to adjust that and it's kind of go back and forth till you get it right. So anyways, that's, that's an update. Uh, I'm looking at the clock here. That's 10 minutes worth of me explaining this, but I think it's important for anybody who's putting one of these in that that is what it does. That's what the offset does. The offset compensates for not being zero volts. And uh, the uh, scale factor uh, gives you, of course, the scale factor of the uh, of the device 100 being pretty well linear it follows it but once you introduce the offset you need to adjust the scale factor of the primary setting so that's it that's it's working now all i got to do right now is that connection that i cut in the back there i'm going to uh, get some heat shrink tubing some solder i'm going to resolder it reheat shrink it and to seal it up and that's closed at that point then, I am going to finish putting the uh, engine stuff together so I can mount my engine. Because as far as I'm concerned, everything in the back behind that fuel tank is done. Nothing left. I'm satisfied that all my sensors are calibrated properly and I can start mounting that engine. So um, I will be back with Movie Magic in a minute, or in your case, a split second after you see a nice clean wipe. And um, I'll show you what else have I've done today to prep for that engine mounting. I can't mount the engine today, unfortunately, because I'm just here alone with the hangar. And I can't hold the engine, put bolts into the mounting bracket by myself. I need two other guys. Two to hold the engine and one to put bolts in. So, um, yeah, that, that will happen maybe next weekend. So we'll see, I hope. Uh, but it's, it's right there. And then once that's done, it's mounting everything else out and do a startup. So, great milestone. Thanks for following along. Be back to you in a second with the remainder of what's happening here.
Okay, well, um, I've got my new plugs on here for the engine. The old ones that came with the engine, um, well, the wiring was very frayed coming out of them. I tried cleaning it up. I tried fixing the wiring in those uh, factory plugs, but I just wasn't confident that it was going to hold. So I replaced the plugs completely. Um, with another set. These are automotive plugs. They're meant for outside wet conditions, that kind of stuff. They're sealed and uh, they'll hold just fine. They're not made by Rotax, but they connect wires. That's all that's required. Um, the wiring is uh, repaired, soldered, and uh, heat shrunk for the fuel system. Uh, and like I said, the engine, let's take a little walk over to the engine. Pardon the shaky camera work. And uh, so, what I've got here is, uh, let's turn the display on, okay, so, um, exhaust manifold is on and torqued, I haven't torqued this plate down because I'm missing a lock washer, and uh, so i got to grab some lock washers for my toolbox back at home, and once I do, I'm going to torque these down for the mounting plate, uh, Loctite as well, there's lock washers on there, but I'm going to use Loctite, um, there we go, the plugs are on the ignition side as well, I think I showed you that. Um, yeah, next step now is to mount the engine, plug in the wiring harness, uh, plug in all of the uh, sensors, the exhaust gas and cylinder head temperatures and whatnot, get the fuel system wired in and um, start it. Cool. Um, hopefully, oh, pardon me. Okay, sorry, I had the radio turned on. There's guys doing circuits at the airport here. So that's it. That's, uh, the engine is, uh, to be mounted next. And then when I get it mounted, it'll be two, you know, three of us here. To, to mount that engine. Um, I'm debating do I put the prop on first or do I do startup without the prop? Probably going to do the startup without the prop because I have to balance the carbs and it's easier to do that with a big, you know, choppy thingy spinning next to my head as I'm adjusting carbs. And uh, uh, that's just for the idle and, and to balance them so that both open at exactly the same rate. It's a very simple process. So you use a little vacuum gauges, two gauges, and you balance it. Anyways, I won't get into that. Uh, you can look that up if you if you're curious. Uh, I've done that on two and four-stroke engines, mul you know, motorcycles mostly, uh, a lot. <laughs> so uh, I know I know what I'm doing on that one. So thanks for following along. Appreciate it. Hopefully this isn't too boring, but uh, hopefully it's informative, especially for those of you who have bought an EIS and an, or or an EFIS and you're having struggles trying to set them up for like pressure sensors and fuel level and all kind of stuff. So um, uh, if it has, glad I could help and uh, we'll catch you again here in the hangar for another update and um, the next update will be the engine mounting. I don't think I'll get it started up at that time because there's you know plumbing and cleaning up and routing and I got to make it look pretty. Uh, but uh, soon the engine gets started. So uh, it is almost one o'clock in the afternoon here and I gotta get going because I'm in the air at three o'clock so I gotta drive 45 minutes to the airport then I gotta do pre-flight yeah and uh, and then get up in the air so um, uh, yeah that's uh, that's it for today thank you very much for following along and uh, we shall catch you again here in the hangar God bless and keep your stick on the ice bye for now this calibration thing took way longer than I expected, but it's finally finished, thank goodness. And it's all working properly. I hope you guys found this useful and helpful in your projects. Thanks for watching.